Why? Uh, misguided sociological, psychological, and political theories have long fostered biblical misinterpretation. We wish to address untruths this document proclaims. That's our document. Any treatise that says jo social justice is incidental to the gospel badly misunderstands both justice and the gospel. Number one, Scripture, while divinely inspired, we deny the Bible is inerrant or infallible. It was written by men over centuries and thus reflects both God's truth and human sin and prejudice. So, you, you just start off, there is, there is going to be no ground at this point. They don't have a divine word from God. Um, they, oh, believe me, they'll go, oh, yes, 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 yes we do. But uh, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Anything that goes against the current social trends, uh, the current theological, you know, this is the, the big theological thing to do now, uh, is going to be viewed as merely men's reflections upon God. Listen to, the, listen to Brian Zond. Uh, listen to the people um, who uh, try to get around the Old Testament's uh, testimony uh, to uh, God's judgment and justice and meeting out of wrath upon pagan countries. And uh, you'll see then, well, this is, this is how the Jews thought about God, but it was just reflections about, it's really not God's word. It's not God doing this. And, and, and so you don't have a consistent revelation. Uh, you have a library of ancient books that you can mix and match and put more weight here and more weight there. There is no, there's no, belief in those divine strands of truth that you can trace through Scripture, all that's gone uh, when you go to a place like Union, uh, because they don't have a word from God. This is, this is and, and I don't use the term uh, liberalism anymore. Uh, there was a time when liberal and left meant the same thing. It's, it's not. Uh, this, is, this is regressive uh, leftist theology. Uh, and uh, it is far, far, far away from Jesus's view of Scripture, and it is far, far away from anything that has historically been orthodox, uh, but it is, uh, and it's, it's the main reason for the death of the mainline denominations. I mean, these are the you know, Episcopalians and people like that, and it's like, what's happening to their denominations? Mm, and there's a reason for that. Um, even in the midst of a secularizing society, where you would think that they'd be doing great. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's a, that is a, that's a good way to kill the church. So uh, they deny the Bible is in an error. We affirm that biblical scholarship and critical theory help us discern which messages are God's. So what's the ultimate authority there? It's our current critical theory. Critical theory changes. Um, that's the very nature of leftist uh, scholarship is to get published, you got to come up with something new. So whatever the new heresy is becomes the ultimate standard. You, you don't have any clear revelation from God. Uh, instead, you, you have this idea that uh, whatever current biblical scholarship is and critical theory, uh, that's, that's the standard. That will, that's the filter that we will run things through. And so you only get that which, well, you know, it, it's been said many times when you look at uh, the quest for the historical Jesus from these same type of people. It's funny that Jesus they end up finding always looks exactly like them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how it works. Um, under Imago Dei, we also affirm that God created every person in God's own image. Accordingly, we deny that vitriol directed towards people because of how God made them, i.e. sexual orientation or gender identity, is in any way faithful, biblical, or godly. So, despite the Bible's teaching that that is something that God identifies uh, as against nature and something that brings God's wrath and, in fact, involves a turning over, we don't need to worry about that because we have a new revelation, and the new revelation's gender identity and you are what you feel you are and, and you know, all this kind of stuff. And so we're, places like Union have no connection 
historically anymore really to the Christian faith because there's there's no word any longer that is the, the scriptures have always you you go back to the earliest centuries of the church the scriptures have always had that central place thus saith the lord they don't have that anymore and so that's that's you you hear that uh here and so you have the imago dei but now the imago dei gets expanded out to where um, the drag queen at your local public school uh, is expressing the Imago Dei rather than rebellion against God. There's, there's no meaningful definition of sin anymore other than believing God has actually spoken. Uh, that's, that's what you get out of wild-eyed liberalism such as we have here from Union Theological Seminary. Justice, we affirm that justice is central to God's liberative mission. Moreover, we affirm that God enacts that justice through humans helping us correct millennia old sins that permeate both church and culture which would include sexual stuff by the way one of the um criticisms of the document that i'm gonna get to from my fellow reformed baptist elder uh was he was like why did they address homosexuality or sexual gen, uh, gender identity. Why does this document talk about this? Because as we saw yesterday, what was one of the major pushbacks we experienced from homosexuals? Because they know that if what we're saying throughout the document is true, then they see the connection. They recognize the overarching reality of God's law, stuff like that. It's funny that, that someone who actually had the document before it was released yesterday would go, ah, this is irrelevant. Ah, they're just trying to, they're just trying to get people to, to agree with them because this is just sort of given. <laughs> no, uh, being on the receiving end of all the nastiness over the past 24 hours, I can assure you, um, we saw one of the things that we saw as a group, even and this, this was discussed in Dallas in the Genesis of this statement. I was there was the fact that right after MLK 50, here comes the, the, the choo-choo train that's following after the social justice train is uh, egalitarianism and these, these uh, soft views on homosexuality and so on and so forth. And it's like the, the door gets kicked open and here it all comes because it's riding on the same track. And if you don't see that, well, uh, I'm sorry, but we certainly saw it. And uh, the responses we got yesterday, and this one right here, here's Union, um, demonstrates very, very clearly um, what it is we are, uh, we are talking about there. Uh, Moreover, we affirm that God enacts that just as human. Okay, and then, we deny that critical theory is irrelevant to this mission. Well, uh, obviously, critical theory becomes their ultimate authority rather than Scripture. God's law, we affirm that God's law is summarized in the two great commandments. They skipped the Ten Commandments. Should guide Christian morality. However, we deny that wisdom accrued in the centuries since the Bible's inception is irrelevant to understanding what it means to love one's neighbor as oneself. Well, it's not irrelevant, but it is not primary. Uh, it is relevant insofar as it reflects properly upon the entirety of God's law, but God's law remains primary. They don't want any of that God's law stuff because that messes with their transgender homosexual stuff that they just got done uh, defending. Uh, five, sin. We affirm that all people, systems, and institutions are affected by sin. We deny, however, that we are only responsible for our own personal sins. Uh, God calls us to understand how we benefit or are harmed by structural oppression and break sinful systems down. So there you've got your, your oppressors, oppressors, neo-Marxism, critical race theory. We, we affirm all this. And they don't have to come up with the biblical basis for it. They don't. They don't even need to. It's, it's irrelevant to them. They don't, they don't have to go there because that's, that's their givens already. Uh, we affirm that the gospel is revealed through Jesus and that liberation was central to Christ's mission. In his own life, however, Jesus demonstrated that works, living justly in the world, are every bit as foundational to the gospel as faith. They cannot be separated. Uh, let's just allow the next one to sort of cast light backwards upon that. Uh, seven, salvation. We deny that salvation is only found through Christianity. 
that God's salvific grace is exclusive to any single faith or religion. So we just deny what Jesus taught, but we're going to keep calling ourselves Christian. We're going to deny what every single apostle of Jesus Christ taught. This is, this is, this is leftism. This is Union Theological Seminary. This is, this is, and again, one of the problems is you'll still find people. I don't know why they do it. You'll still find people within sound scholarship talking, oh yeah, we've got, we've got some great scholars at Union. You need to recognize what's going on, folks. Um, there are great scholars um, at, at predominantly atheist institutions, but you need to recognize what their worldview is. Um, but uh, yeah, so here, here you go. Um, we deny that salvation is only found through Christianity and that God's salvific grace is exclusive for any single faith or religion. You cannot even begin to make heads or tails, heads or tails out of the Bible and make that statement. So clearly, there is no longer any connection. The Bible is just an ancillary thing. You can pull out a phrase here, but, but actually what it actually teaches as a whole, these people have completely lost any belief that it as a whole has a coherent message. They just don't believe it. And again, I know I'm sounding like a, a broken record, but uh, if you believe there's a coherent record, you are a coherent revelation in Scripture, you are in the minority. You are in a small minority. Just, just realize that and recognize that. Moreover, in God's eyes, there is no difference in spiritual value or worth between those who are in Christ and those who aren't. I'll let that sink in for a moment. There's no salvific grace. There's no being in Christ. There is no um, uh, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. There is no forgiveness of sin, the imputed righteousness. Christianity is gone here. It's gone. All you're left with is a, a very ugly shell. And yet this, these, this is where Episcopalians are being trained and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so once again, moreover, in God's eyes, there is no difference in spiritual value or worth between those who are in Christ and those who aren't. Uh, eight, the church. The primary role of the church is to serve God. <clears throat> Not sure which God, but certainly that service includes preaching and administering sacraments. Why? Why, why, why do that? I mean, even the sacraments, to use that terminology, point to the exclusive nature, the sacrifice of Christ, which was just denied as being the only way of salvation. So I, why bother? I really, I have significantly more respect for atheists than I do uh, for leftists like this, because there, there's no reason to do what you're doing. You're just, you're just playing at church. And everybody knows it. That's why your denominations are dying, and deservedly so. Um... Uh, da -da 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 uh, to serve God, certainly that service, but we deny, this is a very small print, sorry, uh, we deny that political or social activism shouldn't be viewed as integral to this work. Well, you need to have that, because there's nothing really of essence left in your, in your system, anyways. You know, it'd be a whole lot easier if I was looking over here, because I have to keep looking up and down, up and down, up and down, and this is small print. Um... Laws may or may not change sinful hearts, but they save lives. Okay. Heresy. We affirm that heresy is a denial of God's will. Well, since it's God's will that salvation comes through Jesus Christ only, and you deny that, that makes you a. But furthermore, affirm that certain heresies have long concealed themselves inside the church, corrupting it from within. Heresy ought to be condemned, regardless of whether those espousing it happen to be ministers. Well, uh, agree on that one, and uh, that's why we would say that this is heresy. Sexuality and marriage, we affirm science and theories confirmation that God created humans to live in various sexual orientations and genders. Uh, it's not science, and I don't know what a theory this theory is. Uh, neither one. The spectrum of human sexual experience attests to God's expansive love. <laughs> We deny that any love that does no harm should be rejected. Think about what that might mean. Follow that one through. This is the absolute nadir of moral and ethical collapse on the part of faux Christianity. It's just... Complementarianism, we affirm that this doctrine has long been used to propagate Christian patriarchy. Summer, we found the patriarchy. It's at, it's at Union Theological Seminary. They, they're holding it captive. Um, 
Uh, we affirm that this doctrine has long been used to propagate Christian patriarchy. It amounts to separate but equal. Cloaked in religious language, we deny that women are unfit to lead as pastors and know the church desperately needs their leadership. So, again, these aren't people who believe the Bible, so they're going to come up with whatever they come up with, whatever happens to, you know, fit uh, with, with the current social trends, and that's what they go with. That's... That's what that's all liberals have. They don't have revelations, so you know they're doing the best they can. Poor people, uh, and, and remember, their their churches are dying on the vine, and so there's there's a 